Hey, this is Par64 Guy, and today we're going to talk about batteries, specifically these kinds of batteries. These are what's known as alkaline batteries. It's a primary cell, which means it's non-rechargeable, and they typically use an alkaline chemical for their uh, carrier in the electrolyte. So alkaline is the opposite of acid. So think of like a car battery, those are lead acid, it uses sulfuric acid, it's pretty nasty stuff. Um, the potassium hydroxide that is typically used in this technology is also kind of a nasty thing. It's very basic and it can do some damage if you come into contact with it for a long period of time. Now, one thing you may have noticed is you have a device that's not working and you open it up and the battery compartment is coated in this white crusty stuff. What is that? Well, that means that one of these batteries has leaked. Typically what happens is if the battery gets over discharged, the chemical reactions inside get out of balance, builds up gas. That gas has to get out and typically there's a seal on the back of the battery that's your weak link so that the whole thing doesn't go off like a firecracker. It will vent and allow the electrolyte and the gas to get out. Uh, the electrolyte is typically a water solution with this potassium hydroxide in it and once the water evaporates you're left with the white crusty stuff behind. And you need to clean that up. So how do we do that? Well, that's what we're going to go through in this video. So this is our patient. This is a Nintendo Wii Fit balance board. It's an older model, I know, but yeah, it still gets used. And it uh, hadn't been used in a little while when the kids went to go use it and didn't work. And so sure enough, yep, we got the white crusty stuff. So to do this cleaning operation, I've got a 50-50 mix of water and white vinegar, some cotton swabs, some eye protection, and I didn't have any white uh, rubber gloves, so I figured maybe a plastic bag may work as well, just so that my hands don't come in direct contact with this um, potassium hydroxide uh, salt that's uh, remnants here. All right, so first thing we're going to do is just pull out the old batteries. And that one looks all right. I'm guessing that one might have leaked. Actually, that one's got the most crust on it, so this one's probably this is probably the one that popped. Usually, the one or more cells will go. Depends on how long they've been sitting. I'm just going to take and wipe down the contacts with the vinegar solution. You want to neutralize that potassium hydroxide and also just try and clean up the mess because this, this will corrode the contacts over time as well, which is not good. If your contacts end up getting all corroded, then they will no longer make contact and your device will definitely stop working permanently. Not good. And the reason why I'm going carefully here is you tend to, you can see in here there's holes in the battery compartment. Uh, and if you leak or drip liquid down into those holes, you can get liquid on circuit boards and other parts that don't want to get wet or have chemicals put on them and you can cause damage. So just trying to go easy. These are damp, not soaking wet. We just want to get that, that salt off of these things. Stuff up. Okay. And now I'm going to use a piece of paper towel. And this I'm going to just put in. This is just water, plain water. I got it where it's damp. And I'm just going to wipe this up. 
is to get the now acid, the acetic acid off of the contacts. For now, because it's hard to work with that, hard to work with that bag. At this point, most of this stuff is neutralized, so I should be okay. I just want to get a little more of this up. See, it looks a little better. Contacts look a lot cleaner. And we've got signs of life, which is good. So, Hook that up to the uh, main console and make sure it works. So I want to clean off the uh, this guy now because you can see he's got a whole bunch of stuff on there. I'm just gonna push some of that off. Trying not to get it on my other hand, which I don't have. Now, obviously, if you do this with gloves, do it with uh, two gloves. Use a little more of that vinegar solution. And yeah, I'll do this with you know, bare hands, but as I said, it's okay if you're in contact with it briefly. Plus, I'm also neutralizing it with the acid. And I will wash my hands immediately after doing this. Some water, get the mixture off. Because remember that potassium acetate is also a like kind of a salt, so when the water evaporates, it's gonna leave it can leave a powdery substance behind. We just don't want to get that stuff into the electronics. Electronics tend to be very picky. Remember that any device that does not have a mechanical on-off switch, such as this, will always consume some power to monitor the buttons. Like for example, this remote control. It's always consuming a little bit of power to monitor to know when one of these buttons has been pressed. So the batteries will be discharging in this remote at a very low rate, but they will be discharging. So if these batteries are left in for a long period of time, it could bring the batteries from brand new down to dead and eventually over discharge, which means that they will start to leak. So if you're not going to use any device for a long period of time, highly recommended. Take at least one battery out. Well, that does it for another video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot about batteries. I know I've learned a lot over my years of developing battery operated devices. I've spoken with engineers at Duracell. Uh, learned a lot from them on kind of what happens under the hood. So hopefully this video is giving you some insight into the proper care and feeding of devices that are using batteries and what to do when you get a uh, case of leakage and that it's not a horrible catastrophe, it is solvable. So if you'd like to see more videos, definitely hit that subscribe button down here, leave a like, leave a comment. If you have any suggestions on other projects you'd like to see me do, Send a comment down below and I will definitely see what I can do to get to it for you. And um, I'd like to thank my camera person for helping me out during the filming of this video. And I've definitely got more ideas for more videos coming, so stay tuned. This is Bar64Guy. I'll see you later.